follow-up is everything and timing of follow-up is monumental because if you take a day to follow up with somebody that inquired about your service or product you've lost them if you respond to them in 15 minutes or less it shows that you're on top of the job being first is paramount because it sets the bar and you can set the standard. That's where follow-up is important and not only prior to the sale, but more importantly, after the sale. Welcome to the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Join host Marco Torres, co-founder of MarketingBoost.com, along with expert guests as they deliver incredible proven solutions to your marketing challenges in each power-packed episode. Captain Marco has guided thousands of entrepreneurs growing their sales and marketing through the use of value-add incentives. His Facebook groups are home to more than 84,000 entrepreneurs who are raking in sales with his advice. Get ready to be blown away with game-changing lessons for your business. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Our goal is to bring you experts in business to motivate you, inspire you to continue to grow your business to the next level. Today, we are in, uh, blessed to be speaking with Frederick Dudek, Freddie D, as he's known otherwise, author of the renowned book, Creating Business Superfans. He's an accomplished sales and marketing executive with over 30 years of experience in achieving remarkable sales performance results in global business markets with a successful track record in the SaaS industry and now in the interpretation and translation industry. Frederick brings expertise and insight to help businesses thrive as the host of the up-and-coming business superfans podcast as well uh welcome to the show freddie d hey good morning marco so tell us about a little bit about that book creating business super fans i understand you took advantage of the pandemic time to uh put your mind on paper and write a book tell us a little about that yeah it uh it was something that i've been wanting to do for a long time and then i was like okay what am i doing now and uh my uh companionette she was uh, working and I says, you know, I'm going to start writing this book. And so I threw down like I, I wrote a, one version of it partially. And then I had her read it. and I had a couple of friends read it and they go, eh, it's OK, but doesn't have legs. And I was like, oh, crushed. And so, you know, crumbled it all up, started all over. And then all of a sudden I got this idea of, you know, if you think of a sports team, and you look at a, you know, whether it's American football, European soccer, uh, baseball, uh, hockey, all those sports, you've got these fans, they got their faces painted, they got the jerseys, they got the hats, they got the banners. They're super fans of that team. And what are they doing? They're promoting that team. And what's it costing the team? Nothing. Matter of fact, they're probably making tons of money off the merchandising and these people got bumper stickers they're wearing their jerseys around and they're basically super fans of that sports team and i go why can't businesses create the same thing and hence when you see my background you know we got our faces painted we got super <laughs> fans in the back but we're wearing suits you know right. we're so we're business super fans versus sports super fans and so i started throwing some words down and what was the fun part was that I will go back and say, hey, Kylie, look, I got 800 words down today. She goes, great. You know, and the next, the next day I got, you know, I got 1,200 words down today. Oh, awesome. And so she was my motivation. And then I was starting to hit more. Okay, I got 1,300 words today. And it, it started to get put together. And then all of a sudden I had a couple people read it. And they go, this has got legs. This is pretty good stuff. And, it, and what I did is I blended old school stuff that, you know, we've learned, but forgot to utilize because we're all caught up in, you know, doing everything on our, on our phones and everything else. And so what I did is I blended old school techniques with new world approaches to create super fans. And that's, what's really making it a success. Awesome. Awesome. And then in your background, so tell us a little bit about just to, you know, set the stage for your global experience with, uh, uh, marketing over the last 30 years, you know, give us just a little insight on that and where you got to today where you're focusing on and intrigued with the translation services. Uh, is that your company now also? Uh, almost. I'm the general manager of it. 
Cool. So, so I'm actually looking, we're talking about maybe me buying it. So we're, we're in that conversation. Nice, um, nice. So I started out as a, as a, a draftsman slash engineer long, long time ago. And uh, if you, you remember, people may not remember, may need to look it up, but the 1982 Ford uh, Escort, I'm the guy that designed the spot weld guns that spot welded the body panels on that car. Whoa. And so we had to do a lot of engineering, a lot of fixture design uh, to make sure the body panels are being held. And then the person could come in with the spot weld gun and weld the tips perpendicular. So I was doing a lot of geometry that led me into the computer aided design world. Uh, I, I got hired in 1980 as an applications engineer. And so I taught uh, companies uh, like General Motors, Westinghouse, Eaton Corporation, and a multitude of others, Ball Corporation and such, um, going from drafting boards to designing in, in 3D on a computer. And so it was basically is, you know, in the old world, you would think in 3D, you would design it in 2D and, you know, and then they would, they would make it. So I was had to teach people that says, okay, you can eliminate the 2D design. You can go from 3D to 3D on the computer. And um, how I got into sales is I did that for about five years. And the company was looking for some salespeople and they wanted to grow it internally. So raised my hand, got picked. And uh, I was very fortunate. I was sent through six months of sales training, you know, some, some, you know, Vanguard uh, training, you know, uh, strategic account management, uh, uh, Wilson learning, connecting with people and stuff like that. A lot of big, big heavy duty class, uh, courses. And, um, and then, you know, for six months, I went through that one week training and then three weeks out in the field, helping the real sales guys at the time. And, uh, in 86, I was officially in sales and I actually ended up uh, winning one of the awards of, uh, you know, highest sales for the quarter, had like 300 grand uh, for the whole quarter. And I just kept moving up, uh, eventually became a uh, district manager, then a regional manager uh, in Chicago. Then I moved to Arizona and I was working for a UK company as a Western regional manager handling the whole Western United States. And then I joined a company in Scottsdale, Arizona, as a director of worldwide sales and marketing. And basically, this says, okay, here's a product. Nobody knows about it. You got a reputation. Go your, to work. Background, your background sounds like mine. Started in, uh, got into sales because that's where the money was. And so I figured there's no limit to what I can make as a salesman. I've always been a sales guy most of my life, you know, involved in people communications. And uh, then I realized, you know, there's only so much I can make as a salesperson because it depends 100% on my ability to get up out of bed and go meet people face to face and close sales. So eventually I said, you know what, I'd rather make 1% of what 100 people can do versus 100% of what I can do and got into marketing so I could put the prospects in front of other salespeople and, you know, get overrides on the whole thing. And that changed my entire uh uh, direction over the last uh, 20 years or so with online marketing since 1986. I've been an early adapter for internet marketing. So, so uh, Freddie D, tell us then about, you know, okay, so you moved into marketing and you've obviously had a lot of success with that since then kind of, uh, and then, so that's where the book came and t take us from there. Where to, you know, let's talk about your main subject here of, um, what is a you know a business super fan and how do you create those type of super fans because all of us in this community were we're entrepreneurs either getting started or we've got you know actual business growing and and obviously business super fans would be uh, would be a blessing but hard to come by so how do you create them well i'll i'll continue off from when i got into the uh, international stuff yeah uh, right. because that'll segue right into that question so uh, the product that I was uh, in charge of was a product called Camworks, which still uh, uh, exists today. And I came up with the marketing tagline back in uh, 1998 uh, of machining intelligence, because it was a relas relational database that had some smarts and basically based upon some parameters, it would execute some things. And my job was to get this product global and i set up about 60 resellers around the world and one of the things that really changed my mindset on stuff is when i was dealing with europeans and asian people 
it was a whole different way of selling. It was really more relationship building than it was transactional based, you know, um, real super short story. I was trying to sell into Japan, couldn't get anywhere. They loved the product. I talked about they would be master distributor, et cetera. I was in Australia, dinner with one of my resellers. I remember this guy said, Paul, what did I do wrong? He goes, what are you talking about? I says, well, I'm talking about the contract, the market opportunity, the profitability, blah, blah, blah. He goes, shut the blank up. He goes, start talking about them and get to know them because they want to know who they're dealing with and they want to build relationships. So next time I was in Japan, got to know them, got them to give me a tour of Tokyo, et cetera. They came here to Arizona. We had a two hour meeting and I spent most of the day showing them around the valley. And a couple months later, I got a $200,000 order. So my point to that, that was I built relationships with those people, you know, and it's really important because you got to understand those were distributors that marketed other products besides ours. So I had to get shelf space. I had to build those relationships with them. And so I would recognize their birthdays. I would uh, recognize them. I would have, uh, we would have reseller because they were known as a reseller awards for the reseller that sold the most, but where I went different and this leads into the book, and I talk about this in the book, is I didn't just recognize the company because the company wasn't the people that made it successful. It was that salesperson or that tech guy at that company that were the ones promoting our product and making the sales for us. So I would recognize the company as well as that sales individual. And that was really the big difference as I recognized that person because one of the quotes in my book is people will crawl through broken glass for appreciation recognition tell me i'm wrong marco absolutely that means more than a than a paycheck in a lot of cases you know what i mean yeah you got to have the money to go with your rewards if you're right. in sales or what have you but the difference between just getting a bigger check or getting the recognition amongst their peers among you know being recognized to these the the you know the higher level management uh that kind of stuff lives in their minds forever more yeah. than the then the bonus uh, check or what have you. Yeah. I mean, it's like uh, when I was selling back in Chicago, I had a company in uh, uh, Rockford, Illinois, that was a tool and die shop. And when I started, they were a 40 man company. And the last time I was there, probably over a decade ago, you know, they were over 120, between 120, and 150 people. They bought the two buildings next to them. They wouldn't let me in. They were holding the door closed because it says every time you come in here, you cost us a hundred grand. <laughs> but I turn around and says, yeah, but let's review. You built two breezeways. You got two businesses. You got a business in Virginia. You got a place in Sweden, you know? So, but they were my super fan and they were, and what I did there was um, I learned, you know, I, I changed the sales approach to not, you know, it's not my product. My, my widget's a widget. You know, it, it can be blue, it can be green, it can be purple. Nobody cares. It's the, the CEO or the owner of a company doesn't care. He's interested in so what's it cost me? What's it do for me? How fast do I make my money back and get a profit? That's it. Doesn't care about any of that other stuff. So I learned, and then the IT manager, I learned what his aspirations were. And so I helped him develop his reputation in the company by picking right technology, putting things in, in place. So every time I needed a reference, I could pick up the phone and say, okay, uh, you know, Marco, here's my phone, call Bob at the, this manufacturing company and ask what he thinks of our service, our company, our software, and et cetera. And I, you know, I just dropped the phone right in front of me and says, go ahead. Matter of fact, here's a whole list of my customers. I had a day timer back in the day. And pick any one of them, they're all referenceable. And most people would go, oh, no, no, that's okay. Uh, you know, how fast can we get this system? And they were sold right then and there. And it was all because of that relationship. And if they did call Bob, Bob would turn around and talk me up because he was a super fan of how I've helped grow their company and I how, how I helped him grow. And because I built that relationship when he was going through the divorce, who was at the bar having beers, listening to what was going on in his life? This guy. And that made the difference. Folks, we'll be right back. We're going to hear from our sponsor, Marketing Boost, and we'll be right back. Hang on. 
It's time to wow, surprise, and impress your clients with the most powerful customer draw card available anywhere. The Marketing Boost Solution Show is brought to you by Marketing Boost, where you can get valuable travel and restaurant incentives to drive your leads from prospects to paying customers. Now you can offer complimentary hotel stays in over 130 destinations worldwide. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com and try it for free right now. Welcome back to the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast. We're talking about business super fans, how to build them, how to create them, how to motivate your super, your business super fans to help leverage those into more business and more successes. You just heard from our sponsor, Marketing Boost, which, by the way, is one way to reward your clients, your business fan, to turn them from just an average uh, client to yours to be a business super fan, reward them with incentives, bonuses, complimentary hotel stays, hotel savings cards, restaurant savings vouchers, create your reward programs and customer uh, client uh, appreciation programs, etc. So uh, back to our buddy here, Freddie D, the expert on building these uh, business super fans. Take it away, Freddie. Ready, tell us some more. Well, um, excellent uh, thing about what you guys do. And I think it's very complimentary to building super fans. And one of the things that I did is I did a lot of research. And what I noticed was that there's a lot of people that are experts in customer retention and customer engagement and all that stuff. But really, in the, in the real world, that's a silo. It's just one component. And then there's people that say, okay, they're employee, you know, motivation experts or retention experts and blah, blah, blah. But that's another silo. Nobody talks about complementary businesses, businesses that, you know, complement that business, flooring and painting company, for example, two complementary businesses. So in reality, they're all intertwined. And here's a perfect example. Okay. Um, the painting company, uh, paints a, a wall for for uh, Susie. Susie's super happy with the with John that painted the wall, his company. So she asked John, you know, now that these walls are all painted, man, my flooring just doesn't look good. I need, you know, it it it, it, it looks old. Do you know anybody? Oh yeah, John says you got to talk to my friend Steve. Well, Steve is uh, you know happy to send, but he sends uh, Mike. And Mike doesn't feel appreciated, hasn't been recognized, feels he's underpaid, feels he's just he's just doing a job, just showing up because nobody cares about Mike. So he begrudgingly goes to do the job. The job is not so terrific. You know, it's, it's shortcuts are made, blah, blah, blah. So now Susie's upset. She's upset, upset at John because he recommended Steve's company. So now he doesn't get a good review. He gets a negative review. She's upset with Steve's company because of the fact that, you know, he's, his company did a horrible job. And so now you got two L's, two loses versus the opposite could have been two W's for both companies, all because Steve doesn't take the time to appreciate the work that Mike does to make his business successful. So that's how all three, that's a perfect example of how all three components are tied together. And business owners need to understand that, that, you know, that's the real world. That's the dynamic that really takes place. And it's paramount that one, they recognize John for giving the referral, because otherwise, if it's a one way aspect, John is always giving Steve the referrals. So Steve is not not giving anything back, not even giving a finder's feedback or anything like that. That relationship is going to dissolve. OK, uh, Mike needs to be recognized and appreciated. So he changes his mindset and he's he needs to be going, oh, my God. Yes, we're super excited. Oh, you worked with John. John's a stellar painting company, man. They're badass. And, and vice versa. And now that changes to where Susan feels, wow, I picked two, two great companies and she's going to tell all her friends and her friends are going to come over to the house. And now she's a super fan of both companies. Very easy, cost them zero money. Makes a lot of sense. In other words, networking and building those relationships with, with complementary organizations that you can... Uh, 
refer your clients to when, when you once you've got them built in now hey you might need the following if, if they're not asking you could still be you know hey promoting one of the one of the suggestions we have next for you is you know uh if whatever it is you do you might you know like you just said okay i'm a painter so now you say by the way you know we've done your walls we painted the outside of your house we've done you need some landscape i recommend some landscaping and the guy i recommend for that he's really really good is xyz company and and now you know if they get the job boom you know and go, of course you've got to have the trust and relationship that knows that 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 landscaping company is going to deliver so that you uh so that you look good and so yeah. forth and, and everybody and so keeps that winning the, the painting guy is a super fan of the landscaping company and it all ties together. Um, you know, and, and so there's, there's the little things. And then the other thing I talk about in the book is, uh, you know, I talk about follow-up. I talk about a pre, you know, follow-up is monster. Let's talk about follow-up for a second. Follow-up is everything in business. You being in sales, you understand that completely. Um, and timing of follow-up is monumental. Because if you take a day to follow up to with somebody that inquired about your service or product, you've lost them. If you respond to them in 15 minutes or less, they're like, wow, you know, and, and all of a sudden it's a different mindset. You got to them. Most likely you got to them first because they're out there shopping to other companies. So you got to them first. So one, it shows that you're on top of the job. Number two, you can set the stage because as you know, in sales, you never want to be the middle guy if they're looking shopping three three companies. You want to be either the first guy to set the standard or you want to be the third guy to do wrap up and, and clobber the two because you already know what the two have proposed in a sense. So being first is paramount because it sets the bar and you can set the standard. And so and that's where follow-up is important. And not only prior to the sale, but more importantly, after sale because as you know the sale begins when the sales closed that's the real sale the onboarding the engagement the relationship beyond all that stuff you know that's where marketing comes in because it's not you know you got them in but now you got to keep them and you right. got to engage with them and you got to make sure that the experience is a successful experience and you know stuff happens but if you react and follow up and handle it fast then it's not a big deal but if it's taken forever for you to follow up or you kick the ball down the road, that's a problem. Now you've lost that as a super fan customer. And now they're telling everybody, you know, oh, yeah, I bought those guys, but their service sucks. And that just wipes out all the work that you just did. Show us your book there, if you would, so we can get some ideas on that. And I'm going to go ahead and oh, we got it. It's not, there it is. Yep. Creating Business Super Fans. Yep. by Frederick Dudek, Freddie D. Uh, let me share my screen real quick and show you guys a little bit of, uh, well, I'm actually on your business super fan scorecard page. I found this yep. interesting. Um, talk to us about the scorecard and what that's about. Well, excellent thing, Marco. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. So what's unique is that each chapter ends with a questions. And so when you're done with the chapter, you can rate yourself as to, you know, how did on a scale of zero to 10, how did you do that? Compare yourself into that chapter, you know, one being, you know, not so good and 10 being a rock star. And you put the dots into the different chapters and then you connect those dots and you'll find out that you most likely have a dilapidated wheel. And so then the, the scorecard goes into an action plan of what can you do? You know, this is just the front of it, but there's several pages of what are your action steps to make changes and track your progress by making changes to improve your score. I love it. I love it. Speaking of follow-up, I'm going to break to hear from Automation Booster, and we'll be right back. Is your business on autopilot yet? Do you have automation in place to capture, nurture, and convert prospects into clients via email, SMS, ringless voicemails, appointment setting? Get all the inbound and outbound marketing tools in one place. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com for more on automating your business so you can make money while you sleep. 
We're talking to Freddie D about building business fans, super fans for your business. And right before the break, we were talking about the, the importance of follow-up and the speed of follow-up and making sure you're the first in line with producing that, uh, creating that uh, standard for people to choose you over somebody else. And guess what? If you're not using automation, if you're not using a CRM, if you're not quickly communicating with clients via email, text message, voicemail broadcasting, if you don't have proper landing sales landing pages that help sell your product, if you're winging it, guess what? You're losing it. Automation Booster, if you don't already have a CRM system or you're not happy with what you got, go check out automationbooster.com. We really, I've, in all of my years of marketing, and I've been in the business since 1996 with online marketing, I've never seen a product like Automation Booster that puts everything under one umbrella for, for all of your inbound and outbound communication program, you know, products to communicate quickly with your clients and automate a lot of those processes with follow-up, et cetera. So check it out at automation at marketingboostsolutions.com. You'll see the link for Automation Booster. Back to you, Freddie D. Let's talk about uh, uh, going back. Let me pull back up your website once more. And let me see if I get back to your main page. Get, folks, you can find this at businesssuperfans.com and you can order his book, listen to his up and coming podcast and join his community and check out the free scorecard. That's one of the things that we want to promote today is after you've read the book or during the process of reading the book, you can be following along with uh, your scorecard and see how you measure up with your ability to be prospecting, following up, uh, generating uh, some uh, thank you and birthday messages to your clients. And uh, what do I else we have on this circle? I can't quite read it upside down. Appreciation, <laughs> recognition, retention, the unexpected extra. And let me talk about the unexpected extra real quick. Sure. The unexpected extra is, is monster size. Um, here's a perfect example and a real world example. Last year, we went to a restaurant. Uh, we ordered the food and it was a ba basically a takeout delivery. So we ordered it, got it all in. I show up there, no order. So the the hostess goes and gets the manager. The manager comes back and says, look, here's the you know, caller ID. I called it in, all that stuff. He goes, oh, our, our, our apologies. We'll make it right away. Uh, here, have a beer on us while we cook the food. So sitting there having the beer, comes back out the food, pull it out. We look at it. One of the, I mean, you know, when snowballs, it snowballs. One of the dinners is wrong, completely wrong. He's completely embarrassed. He goes, okay, I'm going to go back and make sure that this is taken care of. So he goes back, you know, 10 minutes later, he comes back. He goes, um, he goes, hang on a second. And he, he runs back, comes back. He gives us some two desserts, okay, two cheesecakes desserts. And then he pulls out two coupons for $5 off for both of us to come back. I says, okay, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate it. What do I owe it? He goes, no, it's our mistake. He goes, it's all in the house. I went like, wow, really? He goes, yep, it's all in the house. And guess what? I'm talking about that place. It's called Hula's. I'm going to promote them They're in High Street uh, in uh, Phoenix. And we've gone back there many, many times because the food's excellent and the service is excellent. And there's a perfect example of, how to leverage the unexpected extra to create a super fan. Something going over and above and unexpected, et cetera. Yep. Uh, and by the way, that ties in a perfect segue to promote myself again with marketingboostsolutions.com. Folks, we've used, let me give you an idea of how uh, many of my clients and myself even have used marketing boost incentives to even to fix a customer service problem like that. Uh, for example, the one he just described, and I've had clients where we've had, you know, we dropped the ball, we kind of maybe we didn't fulfill as quickly as we should have, we, you know, shipped the wrong product, who knows. And they're even if after they've written a negative review, we've gone back and said, listen, we want to beg you to give us the opportunity to hit the reset button. We're going to ship you a new product. We're going to fix the problem. We're going to do this or do that. And on top of everything else, we want to give you a complimentary hotel stay, your choice of Las Vegas or San Diego on us 
you know, actually you have 130 destinations to choose from, but you said just like that coupon or that free cheesecake, you might say, look, let me give you a three-day getaway on us just for your aggravation. And if after we fix the problem and we give you the complimentary hotel stay on us, would you consider removing that review or uh, or updating it at least? And you'd be surprised how many people will gladly, after they you know, go from being upset at you to turn them around to becoming an evangelist for your brand, like you are with that uh, restaurant you just described, Hula's, was it that, that correct? Yep. Uh, and, and now you're an evangelist for that brand. And when you walked in the door, if it wasn't fixed correctly, you could have easily been one to not only never go back, written several negative reviews on multiple places, and and uh, helped kill that business versus now you're a brand here talking about it who knows how many months later. And that is an example of how, you know, you, potentially whether you use your own widgets or your own bonus or your own going out of your way to fix the problem and add additional bonuses or freebies, Marketing Boost is an example of how you can do it that doesn't cost you hardly anything and yet reward your clients or prospects for referring additional clients or for solving a customer service issue, et cetera. Uh, not to divert and use and be biased with marketing boost, but you know it ties in with your, uh, 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 I've seen, well, we have used it ourselves, even onto your next wheel subject. I'm gonna quickly jump back to your wheel. The reviews, maybe maybe some of you may not know the story of marketing boost and uh, we, the whole company was born on first our own desire to generate video reviews for one of our travel websites. And let me tell this quick story real quick because it might fall into some of your story with your book, but uh, we needed video reviews. And by the way, any business today, you better be generating a consistent flow of reviews for that social proof you need to build your business. And we wanted video reviews, so we couldn't get anybody to ever hardly do it we were to review the hotels and resorts we were promoting. So we came up with an idea to offer them a bonus, a complimentary hotel stay of three nights in Orlando or Las Vegas if they would film a selfie testimonial about the hotel they were staying at. But we did that in a format that right now I'm going to tell you everybody can use this tip. We would do a survey when we expected our client to be at the peak of happiness, which in our case is three days you know, I mean, right after they check in or the day after they check in. So we'd send them a message, email and text message saying, hey, how are we living up to your expectations? Can you rate us from one to five? How's the hotel? How's our service been so far? Now, the problem, the, 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 uh, the benefit of that is if they weren't happy, we would know about it and get a chance to fix it before they went and wrote a negative review or something. And if they were happy, if they were giving us fours and fives, which fortunately the most, the majority were, then we were asking those, hey, would you do us a favor and help us tell a, uh, tell the story, uh, you know, tell the others about that hotel, that brand and our brand. And if you do that, we'll reward you with a complimentary hotel stay. Well, guess what? We've generated now over 30,000 video testimonials on that website alone and thousands of video reviews on other pr uh, uh, products of ours. And, uh, uh, that process has been one way we control our our uh, online reputation, and we even we even throttle reviews. Here's another tip: uh, when, because we're doing this on a consistent basis with an automated system of following up with people after they're using our products and services, we're then uh, throttling the reviews. We're requesting some of the reviews to go to Trustpilot.com, third-party review sites, others to go to SiteJabber, others to go to Shopper Approved, others to Google My Business, others to Facebook. And combined, when Google sees all of these third-party reviews popping up with our brand names and different uh, third-party review sites, guess what? People search us and boom, you know, they're going to see thousands of reviews and the, and the, uh, the uh, social proof we need. Uh, so back to you. I didn't mean to hog my own microphone here. No, 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 this that's is, fine. This but you, I want to, I want to touch. I want to continue on reviews because reviews is really the new word of mouth. I yeah. mean, if you if you think about it, you know, if you're riding, and you know, there's times where Kylie and I will will decide where are we going to go eat, what are we going to do. She looks it up. First thing we do off of our phone is check what the reviews, and if it's got bad reviews, we don't go. And and that's the way the that's the world today. So what you just said is is paramountly uh, important is getting those reviews. And I always say, you know, you got a smartphone nowadays. All you got to do is just remember to turn it 
horizontal, not vertical, turn it horizontal. And right on, right then and there, you just del delivered something, you provided a service, you're all done. The customer is all excited. It takes a couple seconds to say, hey, Marco, would you be willing to give us a quick video testimonial about a minute? Uh, and is it okay for us to be able to post it? That's it. It's not exactly. rocket science. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be Hollywood. It's okay if you bobble the, the video. It's real. It's believable. And, uh, you know, I, I recommended that back uh, 10 years ago to a construction company in Chicago, and their business blew up uh, because of that. And, and then they did the follow up six months later. Hey, Mary Lou, how's the kitchen? You know, I know that, you know, everybody parties and hangs out in the kitchen. So I hope you're enjoying the kitchen remodeling we've done. Geez, I can't believe it's a year's gone by. Hi. And not sell, you know, no 10% discount to buy my stuff. It's just, hi, good thing. Oh, happy birthday. It's your birthday. Just send you a birthday card. It's just staying in touch. Speaking and of that, speaking of let me interrupt you. I like your background on the screen right now. If you're watching this on video, folks, he's got a QR code up in the right hand corner, which is what one of the easiest ways today to ask people to engage. I see so many businesses that I go to and visit like restaurants that, you know, any brick and mortar business and they do nothing to really acquire your contact information in today's world you need to be acquiring and building a database that you own that you can continue to nurture and follow up and so forth easy as putting a qr code on a table tents in your restaurant or on your business if you're a brick and mortar and uh, motivate and promote that your staff ask people to click on the you know on the on the qr code maybe to register to win a complimentary hotel stay like marketing boost could provide you or what have you or uh, and once they're on that page of course you could be saying hey share this on, you know post this live on your facebook fan page you could be easily asking people and rewarding them to tell others about your business on the spot when most businesses don't even bother to come up with any creative ideas to how to capture the contact information of the client. And so anyway, back to you, because I think we're on the same page here on as what yeah. you were just describing there, Freddie. Yeah. And then the same thing with uh, the next thing in the wheel is uh, referrals. And, you know, you got to be able to ask for referrals. People will want to help you. I mean, people, you know, once people invest in your business, whatever it is that you do, they want you to be successful. They don't want to be tied to a losing business. They want to be tied to a winning business. So it's, okay, you know, one of the things that and I'll segue between referrals and, and gratitude is, you know, I, I coach people to say, okay, you know, put out a thing towards, you know, the, at the six month mark, put out a newsletter, for example, to all your customers and say, hey, because of you guys, we've grown 20%. We've added two new people to the organization. Custom, you know, people go, oh my God, they think, think I'm going to make me money. No, they're going to be excited that you're growing because they're got a vested interest in your business. And so, you know, that's when you can start asking referrals is, you know, and thanking them for all the referrals and everything else. And, you know, you can even have rewards for referrals. I mean, there's a multitude of things that you can do to rewards. And, you know, and that's where it segues into the gratitude. At the end of the day, you need to, you know, Thanksgiving is you know, a very brilliant marketing time because that's a time of giving thanks and hence the words Thanksgiving. And I coach people is don't promote, don't do crapola, just send them a card through the old postal mail, a real card saying, hey, you know what? We're grateful for you to being a customer. We know it's the, the beginning of the holiday season and we just wish you and your family a warm holiday season from us. That's it. Boom. Yeah, you don't have to ask for anything else. Just show that gratitude. And by the way, speaking of referrals, uh, when you ask for referrals and successfully a, a client you know, gives you a variety or list of, of referrals, one, two, or three, they are now psychologically uh, a super fan. A super fan. Because now they have to justify, you know, they're going to justify in their own mind this is a good product. I referred friends to it. So I believe in it. And uh, so they're the moment, now a super fan. They're out they're promoting. Now, they're out promoting it. So the more you can get them immediately referring others, 
And maybe that means building and creating an affiliate program, referring, you know, uh, kick, uh, commissions back to people who refer you, clients and so forth. But the moment they refer two or three people to you or so on, they have immediately in their in their own mind said, I love this brand and therefore I'm referring it. So asking for referrals is uh, part of the mix that you need to be doing. And it's just, you know. It's, it's it's one of the things that some people are afraid to do. A lot of business owners are like, hey, just kind of, or salespeople, you know, they want to, they made the clothes, they sold it, and they want to get moving on. They need to, part of your process should be asking for referrals immediately after the sale in most cases. Yeah. Yep. 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 Back to your wheel. So gratitude, and uh, you're referring to sending uh, direct mail pieces to everybody with a thank you note, uh, which is a great idea. And yeah, and the you know, same thing with you know around the holidays, you know, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, all that stuff. Just sending out a, a a holiday card, no promotion, no business card in there, no discounts. It's just happy holidays, wishing you a new prosperous new year, and that's it. You know, it it's just simple touches. You know, I tell people there's really if you want to really blow up your brand. You know, you, you send something goofy and I had the, uh, a uh, mortgage company a guy that owned his, the mortgage company. He sent the Halloween card. He goes, you, what are you talking about Halloween card? He says, trust me, it works. And, and so he dressed up, put a picture of himself in the Halloween costume on, on the card and just sent a funny, a funny message to everybody. He got more phone calls than he's ever gotten from his customers. One thing, what a cool card. Okay. And second of all, you know, thanks for reaching out. And then he did the Thanksgiving and then he did the, you know, the holidays and guess what happened to his business in the, in the following year, it blew up because he got in front of everybody, zero selling. It, it just, it was just recognition and showing appreciation and showing gratitude to those customers. Speaking of that, I see in your wheel, the birthday card, the birthday section. Yep. And, uh, you know, one of the things, by the way, guys, if you haven't noticed, uh, if you're an annual member of Marketing Boost and you join one of our onboarding calls, we give you the Birthday Connector software, which is a software that uh, connects to all of your contacts on Facebook and never forgets to send them a birthday message, uh, you know, so that you can, like we're talking about here, part of the gratitude, you're just re re on their birthday, sending them a message. Uh, with the way the software works is you actually can send them three messages. The way I use it, I'll send the message two days before their birthday, wishing, hey, I see you got a birthday coming up soon. Then I'll send them a message on their birthday. It's a customized image branded with their name in it and my brand. So it's just a, a little branding thing going, hey, well, me and the team at Marketing Boost, we want to wish you a phenomenal birthday. So I hope you enjoy. And then a couple of days later, I'll send them a message with a call to action. And they, in my case, simple. It'll be like, hey, by the way, I hope you had a wonderful birthday. Hope it was off the charts. And if, by the way, if you're in business for yourself, check out the Marketing Boost Facebook group where we can show you how to grow your business. So I'm not selling anything. I'm offering them, you know, join our free Facebook group. And again, that's part of the way I've grown that group to over 30,000 members, entrepreneurs that are building their business. So just a simple idea, again, keeping in touch with the Facebook software that doesn't cost me any money to send them a direct mail piece. And I may not even have their address to always be sending them a postcard in the mail, but via Facebook, boom, it's automatic. So it's just an idea there. You might go get that from, if you're an annual member of Marketing Boost, it's available to you at no cost. Uh, Freddie D, what other ideas can we do to build these uh, business super fans? Well, um, other things would be, you know, like you've got in the case, your case, you know, the Facebook group. So businesses can create a, a, a Facebook group, for example, and it's just information. They can provide information. It's a me mechanism for customers to engage back with them. I mean, there's tools for, you know, uh, software tools for support, you know, so if they have questions and stuff, so you want to make it easy if somebody has an issue and, and life happens, but it's the response time that is paramount. And I can't emphasize that enough because, you know, in my, I'm right now, as we talked to it, I'm running an interpreting and translation company where we provide, you know, language communications to non-English proficient individuals in 400 languages, both spoken American sign language and document translation. 
And, you know, sometimes there's a glitch. We have software that they can connect to an interpreter in less than 60 seconds. And sometimes stuff happens. I mean, it's just, it's technology. But the fact that, you know, they reach out, I get, a lot of times I get the message and I respond to them. Okay, I look into it, respond to them, and then I get a response in less than 15 minutes. And a lot of times the email that gets back is, thank you so much for, and, and, and for getting back to me and looking into this so fast. And I maintain them as a super fan, uh, you know, and, and it's $650,000 a year with the business. Uh, and, and so it's important to be responsive and fast. And that's really the thing that you want to build super fan. Like we talked earlier, things go, things happen. You, you talked about, you know, giving, you know, getting a negative review because service wasn't there or something fell apart, blah, blah, blah. But if you take the effort immediately to get the thing resolved before versus kicking it down the can, well, they wrote us a bad review. Screw it. We'll get a couple more new positive reviews and we'll push that one down. That's the mindset. The reality is, I like what you said, Marco, was let's see if we can turn that customer around because that's the selling part right there and turn that customer around. And now you've got a super fan for life because they're going to turn around and says, you know what? They messed up. But you know what? They 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 stood up, owned it, and took care of it, and made it right, and made it better. And that's really, really critical in today's world because a lot of people, like I said before, just kick it down the can. Yeah, it's just it's obviously easier to do that than to get engaged in trying to fix the uh, the issue. But you know, those negative reviews live online forever, and you know, of course, uh, you know, we we have multiple brands and multiple companies and. We sell travel to different destinations around the world. Lots of products are out of our control. What was the hotel like? What was the room like? What was the experience like in a, a hotel we don't own or operate? You know, and there's certain things you you, I mean, you can never please everybody. So there's some reviews that we, we just, you know, they're, they're negative. They're going to be there. And generating more positive reviews is part of the solution. But, uh, but you can but, also respond to that negative review. Yeah, it's, absolutely. You can't ignore it. You've got to put a response to it. And even if you don't agree with the review, at least acknowledge, because I have a saying that an individual's perception is their, their own reality, right or wrong. It doesn't right. matter. Yeah. It's their perception. And for them, it's right. And you might think it's wrong. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. And getting and, and responding to them will at least hopefully keep it to that to that one review. Because often when you're upset, think about this, you know, if Soliciting reviews, by the way, is part of the process you need to have. Otherwise, normally, when we buy any product or service, we expect to be happy when we bought the product or service. So when we're happy, we don't go nuts writing positive reviews all over the place in most cases because, hey, I'm happy with the product or service. That's what I expected. But if I'm not happy, I am sometimes we're motivated to go write multiple negative reviews. And the, and the more unhappy I am, the more inclined I am to go write it on Facebook, on their Facebook page, to take it to everywhere I can find a place to post a negative review about that company. I want everybody in the world to know about it. And guess what? Google is also likes to make sure if there's a negative review, that's the one they're going to put on top. That you yep. might have a you might have a hundred positive reviews, but one negative, that's the <laughs> one they tell the whole world about. They put the negative Great. right up on right yeah. up on top for everybody to see it. So so uh again, if 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 you if you would take care of it, you at least they might not go post it anywhere else. They right. might just live on the one place they posted, so they don't go write it on, you know, Yelp and Google. Because at least and, they were, they were, they were, they were recognized. They were recognized, and, that, and that's the thing. It goes back to appreciation, recognition. You took a moment to recognize them and say, and, "Okay, I can see your point. It's not. Don't get into an argument. Just acknowledge it. I understand your, you know, where you're coming from, and you know, we're sorry that this happened, etc." You know, and, and it's the same thing with on reviews is, you know, you deliver a service and usually that's the end of it. Nobody follows up. Well, how did Johnny do the lawn job? How did this happen? Or, you know, how was the plumber? You, you know, the, the service is done, good or bad. You don't hear nothing. There's no follow up. And that's where follow up again is important is after the sale or after the service has been provided to reach back out. And, and now is a chance to say, okay, how was the, you know, the plumbing? Oh, he did an excellent job. Super nice guy. Great. Well, you know, uh, Linda, would you be willing to write us a review on Google? We'd be really grateful. It would help us out. And, you know, 
And if you get that done, we'll send you a $5 uh, Starbucks gift card. You know, simple little stuff is, is, uh, makes the difference. Yep. 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 So let me, uh, share some screen. Let's tell people how they can get a hold of you one more time. Freddie D tell us where we can find you. Yeah, you can go to, uh, my, I got two websites. So Frederick Dudek, F R E D E R I C K. You can find me on Facebook as well. And uh, then there's also the business superfans.com website. Great, folks. All of these uh, links are in the notes below here on the podcast or on the YouTube channel. Uh, if you like the content we've brought to you today, please comment below. Tell us what you thought. Tell us how you've used, uh, how you've built any super fans for your business, how you've generated reviews, uh, or what you think of the ideas we presented below. Please comment, like, below. give us a review of the podcast would be a, a huge, uh, uh, something we'd be uh, grateful for. Give us a review and like and share. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast or subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, thanks again, folks, for listening in to another episode of the Marketing Boost Solutions podcast. Again, we're here trying to bring you or delivering to you content that we hope you can help you build your business with, inspire you to succeed, and continue to grow your business. Uh, don't forget to check out marketingboostsolutions.com where you can find software solutions such as the birthday connector I mentioned, automation booster, social lead connector, different products to help you generate unlimited leads. Right here on the screen, you can connect with Freddie D. Click on that uh, QR code up there or uh, click at the links below. Thank you very much again. Like, subscribe, and share. Uh, let me Thank go you, ahead. Marco. Go. It's a pleasure being on the show. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast with your hosts, Captain Marco Torres. Now it's on you. Take the next step now. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com for more on how you can wow, delight, and surprise your clients with the most amazing draw card on the planet. So stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for knowledge. See you next time.